Welcome back. Well, it's been a while coming, but the long-awaited technology roadmap is being released today by the Coalition, specifically Minister Angus Taylor. It does talk a lot about overall reducing of emissions, less about wind and solar. That's considered essentially legacy technology, along with coal and also gas now, but putting plenty of money into future technology. Joining me now is my political panel to discuss this and a few other issues. Liberal MP Tony Passon from the Labor Party, Matt Thistlethwaite. Thanks both for your time, gentlemen. Matt, I might start with you. Morning, Tom. Uh, currently emissions in Australia are a bit more than 400 million tonnes a year. <coughs> this would aim to avoid 250 million tonnes a year by 2040. That's significant, isn't it? Well, obviously, we do need to be reducing carbon emissions in our economy, Tom, but this government's failed to do that. Uh, since they've been elected, we saw that emissions kept going up um, and we didn't have an energy policy. That's resulted in higher electricity prices and a lack of investment in renewables. The great shame about this government's approach, Tom, is that it's not fair. Now, the average Australian family, the average Australian small business have been doing their bit to reduce their carbon emissions. Uh, they've been installing uh, new energy efficient light globes. They've been installing uh, water saving devices in their showers, solar panels on their roofs batteries at their cost. But under this government, the biggest polluting companies are allowed to get away with increasing their carbon emissions. And that's not fair. And I don't hold any hope that this technology roadmap, another one of these policies that they're releasing today, will do anything to reduce emissions or to increase renewable energy in our economy because they've failed so far. But what, going to that question again, 400 million tonnes a little bit more than that, average uh, annual emissions at the moment, 250 million avoided by 2040. Again, it's a significant figure, is it not? Well, of course we want to avoid uh, future emissions. Uh, Labor supports avoiding future emissions. Uh, but th the point is that this government hasn't done that. They've had seven years, Tom, to achieve that, and they haven't because carbon emissions have been going up in Australia and that's due to the fact that they don't have an energy policy. Now we've tried on several occasions to reach a bipartisan consensus with the government on energy policy. The National Energy Guarantee was one of those policies. Every time we offer that consensus they walk away and we've got it happening again today. You've got Matt Canavan out in the media today saying that he doesn't support what his own government is doing with this technology roadmap and that we should be investing in coal-fired power. The government needs to work out amongst themselves what their policy is right. before they go asking the Australian public and the Labor Party to agree to anything. Tony Passon, it looks on the surface to be a lot more focused on emissions reduction. Is this the approach that voters want in 2020? Well, Tom, in my view, voters, voters want us to focus on the twin goals of carbon uh, emission reduction and reliable and affordable electricity. And Angus Taylor uh, and our team have been saying for a long time, the way to get there is via technology, uh, not via the taxation route that the Labor Party was so enamoured with. And this roadmap sets out how you can achieve that. You've said it yourself in terms of the phenomenal carbon reduction um, that is possible as a result of the adoption of this technology. And, uh, and Matt, Matt seems to be stuck in the past here and he's also, with respect, misleading um, your viewers. Uh, carbon emissions are falling and we are headed towards a technology-based um, solution. Now, at the last election, the people of Australia had a clear choice between uh, our government that was focused on practical and sensible um, trajectory towards the Paris target and mm. uh, or, or Labor's plan for mandated taxes. Now. Uh, they spoke uh, effectively very strongly on that question. I think um, people are very relieved that we have Minister Taylor in the portfolio and not uh, Mark Butler. We had emissions, yeah, obviously go up after the carbon tax was removed. They have begun to come down in the past year or two slowly. Absolutely. What do you make of Matt Canavan, Tony Passon and his comments? I mean, is it, is it time to move on from talking about an insistence that coal has a bigger role to play than the one already earmarked? Tom, the reality is in uh, the coalition, there is always the opportunity for backbenchers like Matt, like me, to speak our mind, and that's perfectly acceptable. But the reality is, as a collective, we're locked in 
uh, behind uh, Minister Taylor and this plan. I've been on your show a number of times and I always say oh, I'm completely technology agnostic when it comes to this question. I just want affordable, reliable electricity. And you know what? I'm not Robinson Crusoe. I reckon there are hundreds of thousands, nay millions of Australians who share my view. They're concerned about carbon uh, emissions and they want to see them reduced, but we want to do it in a way that is not going to cruel our jobs, our businesses right. and the economy. Revelations of land the federal government bought. This is a piece of land for Western Sydney, the second runway, not needed for quite a while. It paid $30 million. The Department of Infrastructure valued it at $3 million. The sellers just happened to be LNP donors. How is this above board, Tony? Well, Tom, I've seen the news report, as you have, um, and I understand there's an investigation that's been uh, commenced uh, by the department. I think we need to wait to see what the outcome of that investigation is. I have no more information than you do, uh, no more information yeah. that was available via the media this morning. And um, uh, clearly, it needs to be um, inquired upon, and that inquiry is taking place now. And, um, Tom, I can't assist any further other than to say I'm like others, looking forward to uh, indeed uh, anticipating the outcome of that investigation. It, it came about because of an independent audit office uh, inquiry into this or review of this. It's a, it's a pretty bad look, isn't it? Well, Tom, I just think it, it indicates how strong um, um, these processes are inside of government. Now, I can't uh, offer an opinion for you this morning whatsoever because I just don't know enough about mm. the circumstances. That's why this matter is being looked at closely and so it should be. All right. Matt, Tony Passon, not fobbing that off. There's going to be an inquiry into it. Fair enough? Well, uh, Tom, first we had sports rorts with abuse of taxpayers' dollars. Now it appears that we have airports rorts. Um, I don't understand how the taxpayer can be asked to pay for a piece of land ten times what the value of it was. Um, something's gone wrong here and someone needs to be held to account. Now, the Deputy Prime Minister uh, would have had to have signed off on this transaction uh, and the expenditure of this, if this, this taxpayer's dollars. How on earth can he justify spending ten times the well, amount... we we'll see, won't we? There's and an the money going to... And the, and the money going to a Liberal Party donor, uh, it just simply doesn't pass the pub test for the average Australian. Um, and I think it just highlights why we need a federal ICAC in this country. And again, this is something that the government is dragging the chain on. Uh, they're refusing to come up with a federal ICAC so that we could investigate issues such as this thoroughly in an independent basis and get to the bottom of how ten times the value of taxpayers' money has been spent on a Liberal Party donor.